thought this piece here, it really has something. I'm, I'm sure it's never been used in a funeral before, but you'll see, I mean, you'll hear when you hear it next Friday. And, and I, I guess the memorial, they call it red granite, but it's not red. It's darker, more maroon. It's like the color of his beret in the army. I thought your father would have liked that. And the place, I really hope you like it. It's, well, on a good day, you can see for miles. And even when the weather's not that great, it's so open, you really feel your butt. You really feel your, I mean, he is. He's, he's outside. He's not inside. Not under. Welcome to Kurt Murdoch Uncut. As I'm sure you know already, I am a huge fan of Eddie Mars and he's one of my favourite actors. He's one of those people, whenever you, know, you see his name in the credits, you think, OK, there's going to be something worth watching. He is, of course, a coveted Kermode Award winner and his new film, Still Life, has just come out on DVD. And I was looking back over his career and thinking this would be a very good time to do a top five for Eddie Mars. And except you kind of forget just how much stuff he's done. I mean, think about it. He was recently in X Plus Y, which I like very much. He was in Snow White and the Huntsman, he's the baddie in Hancock, he played Lestrade in Sherlock Holmes, he's part of the ensemble cast in 21 Grams, and he's worked with the likes of Terence Malick and Martin Scorsese. So very hard to nail it down to a top five, but I gave it a go anyway. At number five, Gangster Number One, in which Eddie Marsden has a supporting role There's as just question. one member of a terrific ensemble cast, which features Saffron Burrows and David Thewlist and Malcolm McDowell and Ken Cranham, and of course, a star-making central turn from Paul Bettany. Eddie Marsden is terrific in that film. One of the reasons that Paul Bettany comes across so well is that he is surrounded by utterly believable characters. I remember very clearly watching that film, not really knowing who Eddie Marsden was and thinking, whoever that guy is, he's worth watching because he's brilliant. At number four, the first of two movies in my Eddie Miles and Top 5, directed by Mike Lee, who time and time again proves himself to be the director who gets the very best out of his actors. At number four, I've chosen Vera Drake, a terrifically tough but very important film, brilliantly played by the ensemble cast, a stunning central performance by Melda Staunton. But once again, that performance works because of what's around it. And Eddie Marsden is a very important part of what makes that film so gripping, so powerful, so harrowing, and so significant. At number three, another tough watch, Tyrannosaur. I know many of you have seen it, a really gripping, gritty, and very, very often harrowing drama. Brilliantly directed, I have to say, by Paddy Considine, and standout performances from the entire cast, with Eddie Marsden in his darkest and arguably most challenging role. On to number two, and thankfully we were able to lighten the mood a little bit with Mike Lee's terrific Happy Go Lucky, in which Eddie Marsden plays the driving instructor from hell. En ra ha, Poppy! En ra ha! This is the performance that won him the coveted Kermode statuette, deservedly so. Which brings us to number one, and my perhaps controversial choice for my favourite Eddie Marsden film, The Disappearance of Alice Creed. It's a really stripped-down three-hander thriller, which has twists and turns that you utterly don't expect and relies entirely on the strength of its performances. I remember seeing it for the first time at the beginning, thinking this is going to be really tough, really horrible, and then finding it to be a thoroughly rewarding psychological thriller. It's a film which flips and twists in ways you don't expect. It's stylish, and it's carried off exceptionally well by the Cast. So there we are. That's my current choice for my top five Eddie Miles and films. But I have to say, even as I was doing that list, I was thinking about all the things that aren't in there. What about you? What's your favourite Eddie Miles and performance? And do you agree, as I do, that the man genuinely is a national treasure? Um.